Welcome to Turf Talk with Todd. I'm Todd Smith. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the evolution of synthetic turf. Back in the 60s, the Houston Astros decided they wanted to play indoors, so they built the Astrodome. And at first it had a white ceiling, so the grass could grow inside. However, when you hit a white ball up against a white ceiling, nobody can see it, and that was a big problem. So they said, okay, let's do a black background, a black ceiling, which immediately killed the grass. So they looked around quickly and found something that was uh, already being made, but it's a woven product. It was called AstroTurf. That's what they named uh, their version. Made out of nylon. It's, it's really like a Brillo pad. It's super abrasive, very short, very tough. And then in the 70s, um, they said, wow, we're putting this over concrete and over asphalt and people are getting hurt. And you start hearing the turf toe and some of the other people are you know, just falling down on it. You'd break a collarbone or break something. So then they took it and they said, well, let's, let's put a pad. Let's get something kind of cushy under there. Um, so they started putting pads on it. And a lot of it was based off of running tracks. Uh, the early stuff was they put down more or less a running track surface uh, to, to make it so it wasn't quite so hard and you weren't breaking as many things. Uh, it still had the issues of being super abrasive, uh, but very, very durable and looked great on TV. Then in the 80s, they said, well, maybe we could do something else. Let's get at least deal with the abrasion. And they got a different type of fiber instead of nylon. More of a, it's, I will get go through all the different polyethylene, polyolefin, all the uh, different kinds. But anyway, a softer fiber. They started putting sand in it to make it a little longer and they actually were doing tennis courts and some other things because it played like more like grass. And they could actually play tennis and do other things on it. In the 90s, they did the same thing. They said, okay, instead of a woven product, as you can see, this is just like the carpet that most of us have uh, in our houses. It's, it's actually called a tufted because it punches through the back and then they cut it off. But they made the fibers longer out of a softer material. And then besides sand, they said, well, even the sand was getting hard. Let's start, instead of putting the rubber underneath it, let's put all the crumb rubber in it. And that's where we'll get our pad and that's where we'll get our little give so we don't get the, the foot lock, the turf toe, you know, twisting our knees and ankles and everything else off. And we can still get tackled on it. And now I get a rug burn instead of physically ripping my skin off. So that got really popular in the late 90s. Um, and a lot of sports teams were starting to use it too because their sports teams liked it. And that was going through some evolutions, uh, late 90s and early 2000s, and, and really got going uh, to where people were replacing a lot of grass fields and a lot of whatever with something soft that could be used all the time and didn't have some of the, the same issues. Uh, around 2000, let's say mid 2010-ish, um, and actually that's what I'm showing. They were using a, a pretty fat fiber that would kind of split. And it didn't really look real. They actually got into what they call a monofilament. I mean, you can see this against my, it's a, a thinner grass, a thinner blade, you know, just making it look a little more natural. And they also started playing with pads, different pads underneath, because what they realized is with that crumb rubber in there, a lot of them were getting so much use that they, the crumb rubber was getting displaced and now I am, I'm playing back on the hard surface, uh, which was typically a hard packed gravel. Uh, in some cases, it still was the old asphalt. They just, they just took the original stuff off and put this on the asphalt and it was, uh, again, it was hard. And people said, well, let's put a pad under there. And being that it's also the 2000s, recycling was starting to be a question. How can I recycle this? How can I reuse it? So people were making pads out of recycled parts and pieces. This can only be recycled so many times it's already recycled. And there's a difference between uh, cradle to grave. I mean, at some point you can only recycle certain things so far and now you're done. They're out of use. Uh, certain pads like this one, this is actually what they call cradle to cradle, 
where it can actually be recycled back into its original components and, and just like an aluminum can can be recycled into another aluminum can, this can be recycled back into a pad just as it was. And when you have these, uh, while the fiber could be shaved off, uh, the backing was not recyclable. So they started going a little bit back. They, they actually said, okay, well, let's not do the backing. They started doing a, a woven, just like you would do weaving for a carpet on a loom. That's what this has done. So then we don't have that separate backing that can't be recycled. The next thing that changed that I won't get into is all the different infills, colored, you know, the sands and the walnut shells and coconut husks and different types of rubber. All those infills started changing for different colors, different uh, resiliency, different uses. It just has created a whole market. So in summary, we develop something that works for a purpose. We find out how we can make it better. And whatever its shortfalls are, we make it softer, we make it act more like the natural grass that we're trying to emulate. Something lower maintenance and is available more to the masses. And that gets into also taking care of our environment and we can make it better for recycling and better for everything. And I hope to see you next time when we're going to talk a little bit about some of the nuances of the sport field design and dimensions. Hope to see you there.